And with markets on the move in light of the ongoing conflicts, trade wars, and economic uncertainty, we're joined by Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh and conservative TV and radio commentator Steve Malsberg. Thank you both for being with us. Steve, I want to go to you first. Uh, what do you make of not only the policy here, the, the, the Syrian missile strike by the U.S., uh, but also the politics of what's going on, Steve? Well, I, I think it was done in the exact right way. Uh, we kept them guessing a little bit as to when it would happen. Uh, the president said there'd be a response, unlike Obama, and there was a response, unlike Obama. Um, also, it was targeted. It was brief. It accomplished its goal, uh, and it, most importantly, perhaps also involved a coalition. It wasn't just the United States. It involved, of course, Great Britain and, and France. So I think all that was important uh, to show Syria and, and Russia uh, you know, that uh, it's not just the U.S. and Donald Trump going off, flying off the handle. Um, it was a coordinated effort um, at the United Nations when the Security Council tried to, to condemn it uh, because of a Russian effort. That was denied. Um, and I think that plays into a lot of the stability uh, that we're seeing in the market uh, today. Right. Uh, I'm going to come back to you in a minute on the strategy. Melissa, let me ask you, how are the markets reacting to all of this? Not just the Syrian controversy and conflict, but uh, we've got the, the ongoing uh, trade wars. Uh, Steve might not say it's a war yet, but uh, I call it a trade war. And uh, we've got uh, an other uncertainty and economic uncertainty going on around the, the world. Uh, w what do you say about it in markets? I definitely think it's affected the markets because we're caught in, in a tight, tight range. And I've seen way more selling than I've ever seen in 2016 or 2017 right now in the market in the last two months. And I don't think it's done. We did have a positive reaction this morning, Steve's right, from the Syrian missile bombing. But it really was a weak rally as far as I'm concerned. It, it depends where we go from here. The market has a long way to go to start to look a better where it could be a buy again. Even though we're holding the uptrend in the market, we've had so much selling really since February, I wouldn't tell people to jump back in right here because we could be lower again. I wouldn't be surprised if we are. And we don't know how Russia is really going to react to this. It was good that we went along together with France and the coalition. But overall, this is just too soon to say. It's only happened a couple days ago. Yeah, and, and it, it, the markets, we always have this dilemma, guys. Uh, our show ends right when the markets close, but markets are all up to, to, today. Uh, Steve, let me ask you, uh, you know, you, you talked about the strategy, and I agree with everything you said about uh, a strategy and going in with the coalition and doing things that President Obama didn't do. Uh, but let me ask you this. I mean, how do we, you know, just two weeks ago, the president was saying, let's get out of Syria. Uh, now we're back in it. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a long-term uh, strategy, and uh, I, I don't want to look a, you know, a, a bird in the hand if there's a strategy that some people think is good. But my question is, how does not having a strategy help markets going forward? Well, I think the strategy is uh, to eventually you know, get out. I mean, I would like to get out, and I think most Americans would say, you know, we have an interest in Syria when it comes to fighting ISIS, uh, but once that is accomplished, uh, we should get out. However, when we see this kind of, uh, you know, barbarism uh, take place, it, uh, a lot of people feel that it's incumbent upon the United States and other uh, free and moral nations to act. Um, you know, again, though, I mean, you know, if I may, to the markets, um, we, we, geopolitically speaking, we've had the trade, uh, the trade issue or the trade wars, if you want to call it. I'll acquiesce and go along with that terminology, Bart. Uh, no problem. Uh, but the markets have persevered. We haven't had two down days in a row in the month of April. Earnings, uh, I think, are driving the market today uh, more than the, the Syria reaction or the, you know, at all. Um, they expect 17 percent um, increase in, in earnings. We have uh, retail sales that came out 0.6 percent higher in March um, and uh, car sales up 2 percent. And this is all while politically, at least domestically, um, we have all this going on every day with Trump, like the world's going to collapse. The media will have you believe. And the China and, and tariff situation. So I think the markets, um, I'm certainly not the expert you guys are, but uh, I think the markets have handled it pretty well. Yeah. Melissa, you agree in general? No, I, I think the markets have handled it as well as they could have. But again, I still think there's too much selling going on and not enough buying. Whether we've had one down day, two down days, I'm just saying that I don't see real institutional buying coming in and just scooping up the market. Institutions, what I mean by that is, I mean, big banks, 
I mean, hedge funds, when they want to come into the market, they'll just go right in and the market will drive it up. When we've rallied, even in the last few weeks, we've gapped down and we were down in the pre-market and then we would rally. And then we don't really go anywhere with it. We've seen no follow through. And part of the reason is because too many things are tippy toe. We don't know what's going to happen with taxes. We don't know what's going to happen with the, with all these things that are happening with China. We don't know what's going to happen with the dictator in North Korea. And Trump's supposed to meet with him. And we're waiting to hear if that's going to happen in May or not. There's so many things that are out there that we don't know about. And Siri is just one of a mix of things. Yeah, and, and, and I don't want to... But, but let me... let me Go yeah. ahead, Steve. I was, no, was going to say, I, I, I think that... The, Steve, you no, go, no, that, you never go ahead. Read, no, it, but, I, but I was going to say that um, I, I think that um, the tax cuts are playing a big part. I think businesses are, 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 are very excited about that. There's going to be a lot of buybacks. Uh, that's what they're... I guess we don't know the number, but buybacks are going to go way up. Uh, the, the corporate uh, you know, tax rate cuts, it, I mean, it, it stimulated the market. And the, and the consumer, through all this negativity and all these questions, forget the market for a second, the consumer, the average person out there is spending and buying and, and, and happy yeah. uh, with the economy. So I, I just think things look good. And I think Melissa was probably talking about the possibility of further tax cuts, uh, right, Melissa? Right. I'm saying long term out. Steve and I are on the same path. Things look great. But I'm just talking about right now, the next month, in the next week, in the next three months, summer, 2018. I'm not feeling the warm and snugglies right now because too yeah. many things are out there. Like, say I ran a hedge fund, I wouldn't be buying in, going long strong here. Even though, yes, it's earnings season. That's true. It's going to be a big thing to see what happens with earnings. Amazon, Google, all these companies report in the next two weeks. Apple, too. Goldman is tomorrow morning. Let's see what they do. Let's see if they can move the market. I, th I think you're right. And, and when uh, to Steve's point about not having two down days in a row, uh, another data point, and I don't know if it's still the same as of uh, today or Friday, but from last week was that these moves, positive and negative, have been triple digit moves. Uh, so the market's sort of been all over the map. Yeah, it's holding together, but I don't think there's long term confidence, which probably goes to what you're saying, Melissa, with regard to the institutional money. One place where we are seeing markets move way down, and that's in the Russian markets. And aluminum prices have, have spiked with uh, Rusal, uh, the, one of the largest aluminum producers in, in, in the world. Uh, let me ask you, Steve, uh, we've seen this, uh, whether or not there's going to be more sanctions on Russia or not. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders walked it back a little bit today. Uh, look in your crystal ball. Are there more sanctions to come on Russia? Yeah, I believe there are. And I don't, I don't know really why the delay. I mean, uh, Nikki Haley's usually right on target and well coordinated with the White House. And for her to make that definitive statement the way she did yesterday on uh, some of the morning shows, um, I, I would assume that the, uh, the delay is. Uh, is minimal or maybe maybe it's a negotiating tool because we know that's what Donald Trump does maybe he's throwing that out there and he's hoping that uh, that will be a bargaining chip in whatever reaction we may have yet to see from Russia in response to the uh, bombing we know they moved or reportedly have moved ships and tanks into the uh, the port in Syria hopefully they will never have to be used uh, well, we'll cross our fingers on that. We agree with, with you. And, and we'll also want to keep an eye on oil prices. I noticed uh, Barclays said today that prices would go down later, but that doesn't seem to be the case given everything that's going on in the conflicts in the Middle East. Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh and conservative TV and radio host Steve Malsberg. Thank you both for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you.